Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for May 25th, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Back to the Bible. This is part 54. We've been walking our way through Psalms 119, and we're at verse 173, almost at the end of the psalm. So this is Back to the Bible, part 54. I'm calling this Ability and Favor. Ability and favor. You're going to see what I mean here in a minute. So this is what David said in Psalms 119 and verse 173 from the Passion Bible translation. David said, place your hands of strength and favor upon me, for I have made my choice to follow your ways. He's asking God because he made his choice to follow God's ways to place his hands of strength and favor. I'm calling it ability and favor. Why? Because he made his choice to follow his way. So David was talking about three things in that verse. He was talking about strength or ability. He was talking about favor and the fact that he had made a decision to follow God and to follow God's way. So I'm going to talk about those three things on this morning, on this Friday morning, so we can close out the week strong, head into the weekend strong. You ready for the word? Here we go. Open up your heart to receive. What does this mean to you today? Number one, God's grace gives you access to his ability. I've taught a lot on the grace of God, and, and, and I'm thankful that I get to talk about it this morning. God's grace gives you access to his ability. While many people refer to the grace of God as unmerited favor, and it is, and, and I actually I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute, but God's grace is also his power. Some people don't acknowledge or recognize the fact that God's grace on your life is also his power, his enablement, his power to do what you could not do without him. When you yield to God, when you yield to the grace of God, that's why Jesus said in John 14 and 10, it's the father who lives in you. He gives you the words. He performs the work. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 10, he said, when you go out, listen, you're not going to take any money with you. I'm just sending you out. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to lay hands on lepers. You're going to cast out demons. And then he said, and when you go, you're going to get arrested. You're going to stand before people. And at that point, when you get arrested and you stand before people, don't worry about what you're going to say. At that moment, you will be given the words to say. You will be given. Why? Because it's the grace of God on you. The grace of God to do. Laying hands on the sick, watching them recover. To do what you could... To do what you can't do on your own, to do what is not human, to operate in ways that far exceed human ability, human power, human strength, right? And then it's the Father living in you. He gives you the words. He he performs work. He gives you wisdom. He gives you words. He gives you power. All of this stuff, and it comes in a way that far exceeds what you could do. It's his ability on your ability enabling you, equipping you, empowering you to do what you could never do without his ability. It is his super on your natural, enabling you to operate in the supernatural. So it is this whole thing about ability. And as I was going to close out my point about ability, I'm, I'm just, and it really wasn't part of the message, but I'm throwing this piece in here for free. I wanted to just drop a quick nugget about eligibility as well, right? So the grace of God is tied to ability. So where your ability ends, God's ability can kick in. God will uh, empower you to do what you could not do without him. That's ability. It's his ability on your ability. But let me just drop a quick nugget about eligibility as well, because the grace of God is connected to that as well. So not only does God's grace come to empower you to operate in ways that far exceed your ability, it also comes for free. It is unearned and it comes uh, in ways. It is offered to you in ways that far exceeds your eligibility. That's why the grace of God comes and and this walk with God is not about your performance. It's not about performance-based religion. It is about the grace of God. So God's grace will enable you to do what you cannot do, right? What is not humanly possible to do, Uh, but he will also bless you in ways that you are not eligible for. So by the grace of God, I'm able to operate in ways that are far beyond my ability. And by the grace of God, I'm able to receive favor, grace, blessings in ways that are far beyond my eligibility. It is undeserved. It is unearned. It is unmerited. That's why we call it amazing grace. Number two, God's grace gives you access to his favor. Now, Ability, that's one thing. Eligibility, that's another thing. Now let's talk about favor. 
What is favor? I actually, I've, I've done quite a bit of teaching on favor. God's favor can do more for you in a minute than your labor could do in a lifetime. So you could work on something and you could work for something. And it could be something big that you're going to have to work a year for or five years for, or 10 years for, or 20 years for. And let's say it's something that you have to work all these years for, let's say 20 years for. God can do that for you in 20 seconds. God, I mean, just one word of favor. God can open up a door for you that you can never open up on your own. The favor of God will cause people. He would raise up people to use their power, their ability, their strength and their money to help you in ways that you could never help yourself. I'm, I'm, and people will they will say, like, I don't even I don't normally do this. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it for you. I don't know. I've never done this before, but I'm doing it for you. It is the favor of God. God can give you favor and he will open doors that no man can close. He will close doors that no man can open. And I love it. You know why? Because we are called and commanded to walk and live by faith. And I do a lot of teaching on faith, but favor is not faith. Let me explain. Faith begins where the will of God is known, right? So you have to know God's will before you can release your faith. Faith requires the knowledge of God's will and then a commitment to launch out to experience God's will despite the lack of sense realm evidence to support your activity. So faith is something you say. Faith is something you do. Faith is a seed you sow all based on something God said. And then you have to do it without any evidence to support it. And a lot of times you have to do it despite the preponderance of evidence that is that is against what you're doing. Right. So you have to do it in the face of evidence <laughs> against evidence because God spoke a word. That's faith. But favor is not that. While, while faith is the believer's response to God's grace, favor is not that at all. Favor is different. When the favor of God is in operation in your life, the blessing comes without your faith. You didn't say anything. You didn't do anything. You didn't sow anything. You didn't ask for it. You didn't pray for it. You didn't do, you didn't do anything. This is like, God, I wasn't asking for this. I, mean, I, I didn't even, this wasn't me. It's not on my vision board. It's not something I've been praying about. It's not something I sowed a seed towards. Nothing. You did nothing. And God goes out of his way to do it anyway because he wants to bless you. God wants to bless you because he wants to bless you. It is the favor of God. I'm talking about stuff that is, that is unexpected. I mean, stuff that you wasn't even asking for. It is the favor of God. And David said, Lord, I want you to put your hand of strength, also to put your hand of favor on my life. When the favor of God is in operation, God is always doing things that, whoa, whoa, I didn't, whoa, I didn't ask for that. And it's the favor of God in operation and thank God for his favor. Number three and finally, David did say this. He closed out that verse by saying that his choice for him, that his decision was already made. There is power in making your decision for Jesus past tense. There is power. So, so like, you know, you have active decisions. You're trying to work it out and you're not sure what you're going to choose. And you're not sure what you're going to decide. But sometimes you make a decision and it's past tense and it's done and you move it from this category of active over to this category of past tense. And, 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 and like if this is settled, it's done. I'm moving out. That decision is made and I'm not going to re revisit that, con that decision. I'm not going to reconsider it. I'm not going back to, to debate it. I'm, it's done. It's past tense. There is power in making your decision for Jesus, for God, past tense. Because there are people right now, maybe even watching this video, that, that you are still struggling with salvation, that you are still struggling with whether or not you want to follow God. You are still struggling, struggling with whether or not Jesus is your Lord. And if you're struggling with that decision, then yeah, I mean, what I'm talking about, you know, it, it's going to be hard for you to experience. David said, listen, my decision for you is already made. You got to take the decision for God and move it into the past tense category. Because once it's in past tense, then listen, when the opposition comes, because opposition will come, when the, when the opposition comes, at least you're not going to be wavering about that. You're not going to be debating whether or not you want to follow God. You're not going to be debating whether or not Jesus is your Lord. That decision is made. It's past tense. You've moved on from that. So now you can face whatever you face, but you're doing it with the power of God, with that grace, that ability on your life, with the favor going before you on your life. Why? Because you have already made Jesus past tense decision in your life. You want the ability, you want the favor, choose Jesus and choose him 
Settle this issue in your heart. It can't be something that you're waffling about. It can't be something that you're wavering about. It has to be something that you are decided on and that you're settled and you move that decision over into the past tense category. Amen? So if you haven't made that decision for Jesus today, uh, as of yet, you need to do that. You need to settle in your heart that Jesus was the son of God, that Jesus was raised from the dead, that Jesus died for your salvation, uh, that Jesus rose for your justification, and that as you accept Jesus as Lord, you're born again, you, and now you're ready. You move that into, boom, past tense, now I'm ready to move forward. And come what may, you're going to do it with Jesus and not waffling and wavering about your decision. Amen? So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. It is a Friday morning. I want to send you off into this day and into the weekend strong. Repeat after me. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I open my heart to your grace. You empower me to do what I could never do without you. It is your super or my natural that enables me to operate in the supernatural. Where my ability ends, your ability kicks in. There is nothing you cannot do. You live in me. Therefore, there's nothing I cannot do. Your favor goes before me and blesses me in ways that I didn't even ask for. You bless me well beyond my performance. You empower me to operate in ways that are beyond my ability. And then you bless me richly in ways that far exceed my eligibility. You do this simply because you love me. You do this by your amazing grace. So I enter this day ready to receive and to release and to impact this world in ways that are beyond me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. It's Friday. On Fridays, I'd like to remind you that we have a podcast in the iTunes store. We have an app in every app store. We have a website, todaysword.org. Our ministry website is ripministries.org. We just, everything that we put out there is for free. Please receive it, grow, develop, become the man, the woman that God has called you to be. And as you head into this day and into this weekend, I pray that you experience God's ability on your life to do what you can't do without him and that you experience God's favor, that he will bless you in ways you didn't even ask for. Have a blessed weekend. God bless you.